Okay, this is lesson 2.0. Uh, in, in this lesson, we're going to review how to find the slope of a line uh, given two points and how to find the equation of a line in a bunch of different scenarios. Uh, but just to review, the slope of a line is designated with the letter m in the y equals mx plus b equation, and it shows you how steep a line is. The greater the magnitude, so the bigger m is, the steeper the line is. Uh, lines with positive slopes rise to the right, and lines with negative slopes fall to the right, so they go down, left to right. A uh, horizontal line has a slope of zero, and a vertical line has a slope that's undefined. As we'll see later in the lesson, parallel lines have the same slope, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And we're going to use those properties later in the lesson. Um, what we're ultimately going to be able to do is find the equation of a line if I've given you two points. But before we get to that, we have to go through a couple steps first. <clears throat> so I want to review first how to find the slope of a line if I give you two points. And that's example one. So determine the slope of AB, where point A is 4, negative 13, and B is negative 5, 5. The equation we had last year that would help us find the slope was that the slope M is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And if we go and look at our graph here, if we have two points, point 1 and point 2, the x1 and the x2 just describes the two values of x. And the difference between those is the run, how far we run. Same with the difference in the y's, y2, y1. If we subtract them, we get the rise. So really, this is just rise over run. So let's look at our points and try to plug them in. We've got point A. We're going to call that our first point. So in point A, we have an x1 and a y1. And in point B, we have our second x and our second y. Now we could have switched these and called this point 2 and this point 1 and labeled it x2 and y2, x1 and y1. It's up to you which one you designate as your first and second point. I just went in alphabetical order because I think it's easier. Um, let's plug some numbers in. We've got y2 minus y1. So y2 is 5. So we've got 5 subtract. y1 is negative 13. So it's going to be 5 subtract negative 13. Divided by x2 minus x1. x2 is negative 5 minus x1 is 4. And now we got to do a little bit of math here. <clears throat> 5 subtract negative 13 is like 5 plus 13, which is 18. And negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. So we've got 18 divided by negative 9, which is negative 2. So our slope is negative 2. So if you're ever given two points and you need to find the slope between them, you can do that by using this equation. Now, let's build to finding the equation of a line. We know the equation of a line looks like y equals mx plus b. And if I'm asking you to find the equation of a line, at a minimum, i got to give you two points. But there's a bunch of different scenarios. Um, I could give you a single point and the slope, and you would be able to find the equation of a line from that information. Or in example three, we're going to find the equation of a line from just two points. So let's look at both examples. Um, in the first one, I give you a slope and a point. Well, we know the equation is going to look like y equals mx plus b. And let's look at what parts of this equation we're given. Well, slope of 2, that's m. m is 2. And if I give you a point, I'm giving you an x and a y. So if I look at my equation here, I'm given m, an x, and a y. I'm not given any information about b. But the nice thing about an equation is, once you're given three parts of it, there's only one part we don't know. If you have an equation where there's only one thing you don't know, you can solve for it. So since we know x, y, and m, we can solve for b. And why that's important is because, well, when we write the equation of a line, Usually, the things that are filled in are m and b. That's what we want to try to get to. 
So if we can find B, and we already know M, we can write an equation of a line, Y equals something X plus or minus something. That's the goal. We want to be able to find M and B to write the equation of a line. So let's plug in what we know. It says Y is 5, M is 2, it says X is negative 2, and we don't know B. Well, if we do a little bit of math here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And if we move the negative 4 to the other side, we can do that by adding 5 plus 4, and 5 plus 4 is 9. So now we know what B is. Since we know what B is, we can use M and B, M being 2, and B being 9, to write our equation. So we can say, therefore, y equals 2x plus 9, because we've replaced the m with 2 and the b with 9. <clears throat> so determining the equation of a line is all about finding the slope and the y-intercept. If you're given slope, you just have to find the y-intercept, and then you can write your equation. If you're not given the slope, Let's say you're given two points instead. Well, you have to find the slope and the y-intercept. And because we've now done example one and example two, we have the tools to do that. First, we can find the slope by using the equation we used in example one. We've got our two points. There's our x1 and our y1. There's our x2. Uh, y2. So plug those numbers in. y2 is 7 minus y1 is 6 over x2 is negative 1 minus x1 is 2. If we do a little bit of math, we get that m is 7 minus 6 is 1 over one, negative 1 subtract 2 is negative 3. So it's 1 over negative 3. And we won't change that into a decimal um, because it's not a very nice decimal. It continues and we have to round it. But what I am going to do is I can take the negative sign and move it in front of the fraction. And there we have it. We have m is negative 1 third. So now this question becomes much like example two. We have the slope and we have a point. In fact, we actually have an extra point or the second point. We could use either point. But now we're just going to look to find the equation of a line using the slope and the point. So I write my equation, y equals mx plus b. I can fill in m because we know the slope's negative a third. <clears throat> and we can use either the first point or the second point. But you can't mix and match. You can't use like the x from the first point and the y from the second point because they have to be on the line. The point actually has to be on the line, and both these points are on the line. So I need to just use the first point. 6 for y, 2 for x, plus b. Now, if you don't like working with fractions, that's fine. You can eliminate the fractions by multiplying everything in the equation by the lowest common denominator, which is 3. What that looks like is, well, 6 times 3 is 18. When you have a third times 2, you don't actually multiply both parts, you just multiply the third, because then it's going to be multiplied by 2 after, so you don't have to do both. Uh, negative 1 third times 3 is just negative 1, so we have negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. One third and three are like opposites, they multiply to one. And b times three is three b, and now we don't have to work with fractions. We can bring the two over to the other side and do 18 plus two equals three b. And that's 20 equals three b. Come up here to finish this off. 20 equals three b. If we want to solve for b, we divide both sides by 3, and we end up with b equals, that doesn't work out to a very nice decimal either, so we'll keep it as a fraction, 20 over 3. And now, just like in example 2, we have m and b, we can write our equation. Therefore, y equals 
negative one third x plus b 20 over 3. And there we have an equation of a line. So from this first page, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to find the equation of a line, whether we're given the slope and a point or if we're given two points. All right, on to the next page. <clears throat> In example four, we're looking at two special cases. Uh, we're looking at the case of a horizontal line, and we're looking at the case of a vertical line. Uh, horizontal and vertical lines have special case equations, and I'm going to show you why. <clears throat> if we Consider A, it says determine the equation of a horizontal line that passes through the point 2 comma 3. Well, if I sketch that point on a graph, it would be uh, 2 for x and 3 for y, it'd be a point about here. And if I was drawing a horizontal line, that would be a flat line, like that. Well. The only thing we have about that line is the y-intercept of 3. Since the slope doesn't have any rise, it's all run, that means the slope is 0. Horizontal line, m equals 0. So if we tried to write the equation of the line, the only thing we have is that, well, our y-intercept is going to be 3. So we have a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of 3. Let's see what happens when we put that into y equals mx plus b. When we put that into y equals mx plus b, well, y equals 0x plus 3. Well, 0 times x is just 0. So we end up with y equals 3. And when you have an equation of a line that's horizontal, it's always going to look like just y equals something. And for any horizontal line, or let's say every horizontal line, every horizontal line we have, the equation is always going to be y equals b, whatever the y-intercept is. And in this case, the y-intercept is 3 because, well, the y value of the point that I crossed was 3. Since it doesn't go up, it's only going across, the value of y is never changing. It's always 3. And that's really the only thing we can write. y is always 3, no matter what x is. <clears throat> Vertical lines are pretty similar. I'm going to sketch this point. Our point is 4, 1. So let's say 4, and... One. Well, if we draw a vertical line, that would be straight up and down. Now, if you try to write a y equals mx plus b for this one, you can't because a vertical line, the slope is undefined. And there's no way to express that as a number. So, <clears throat> we can't use y equals mx plus b. So, we can only write the equation using the only thing we know. The only thing we know is that 4 is always the value of x because we're not running, we're only rising. So no matter where we are on this line, if we're up here, if we're down here, the value of x is always 4. So the equation is just x equals 4. Where's the 4 come from? Well, the 4 comes from that point. Just like the 3 for the y, for the horizontal, came from that point. So for every vertical line, the equation is always going to be x equals a. a is whatever x value you're given as a point, because the x value is never going to change. So those are two special cases for horizontal and vertical lines. <clears throat> okay, last thing we need to look at is parallel and perpendicular lines.
Write the equation of a line parallel to this line that passes through this point. Well, what we know about parallel lines is parallel lines have the same slope. So, we need to figure out the slope of this line. If we can figure out the slope of this line, then we know the slope of the line we're trying to make the equation of. So let's figure out the slope of this line. It's in standard form, 2x plus y minus 5 equals 0. <clears throat> if we rearrange it to y equals mx plus b, we can find the slope. Well, y is positive here, so I'm going to keep it on the side. I'm going to move the 2x to the other side, make it negative 2x. And I'm going to move the 5, negative 5 to the other side, make it positive 5. And now, we know the slope. <clears throat> So a parallel slope would also be negative 2. So now we know the slope of the line we're trying to write the equation of. And we are given this point. And as we remember, a point has an x and a y. So now this is much like the example we did on the first page. We know the slope of the line we're trying to make, and we have a point. So we can use the equation y equals mx plus b. Plug in what we know, 5 for y, negative 2 for m, negative 1 for x, and we don't know b, and now we can solve for b. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, and if we bring the 2 to the other side and subtract, we get that b is 3. And now we can write the equation of a line because we know m and b. So our line is y equals negative 2x plus 3. <clears throat> to find the equation of a perpendicular line, um, the process is very much the same, except perpendicular lines don't have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal Slopes. So let's start by finding the slope of our line that we want to find a perpendicular line to. So here's our line 3x plus y minus 6 equals 0. We want to get y by itself. So we're going to move the 3 over, we get negative 3x, and move the negative 6 over, we get plus 6. So here's our slope, and we want to find a perpendicular slope. So a perpendicular slope, we can say m, and if you draw this upside down t, that means perpendicular. So a perpendicular slope would be the same as this slope, but the negative reciprocal, so not the same, the negative reciprocal of this slope. Negative means change the sign. So that's the negative part of negative reciprocal. This slope's negative. Our slope is going to be positive. Reciprocal means flip the fraction. Well, 3 is not really a fraction. But 3 over 1 is a fraction. So if we want something that's perpendicular, we want to flip that fraction. So we want to flip this fraction, make it 1 over 3. And again, the negative part means the opposite sign. So instead of being negative, our slope's positive. So a perpendicular slope would be 1 over 3. We have a fraction of that. So now that we know the slope and we have a point, much like the example above, we can start writing the equation of our line. Our line is going to be y equals mx plus b. We know the slope is a third. The y is 2, and the x is 5. Again, we have a fraction, and if you don't want to deal with fractions, you can multiply the whole thing by 3, the lowest common denominator. We only have one fraction, so we only have one denominator. That's the only thing we need to multiply by. So, everything by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. A third times 3 is 1, and 1 times 5 is 5. And b times 3 is 3... B. 
So now we need to isolate for b, move the 5 to the other side. We get 6 minus 5 is 3b. 6 minus 5 is 1. And if we divide by 3, the 3's go away. We end up with 1 third is b. Hey, that's the same as the slope. It's kind of a coincidence. So the equation of our line that's perpendicular to this line is y equals m, the slope, one third, x plus our y-intercept, one third. All right, that was a lot of review of equations of lines. Um, but what you might have noticed is if the line's not horizontal or vertical, it's basically the same process every time. It's figure out the slope, use the slope and a point, x, y, to find b, rewrite the equation. It's just finding the slope takes a bunch of different forms. If you're given two points, like we were in our first example, sorry, not our first example, our third example. If you're given two points, you find the slope by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Find your slope, plug in a point, find your b, write the equation. If you're given instructions to find a parallel line, well, you find the slope of your first line, use the slope and a point to find b, write the equation of your line. It's the same process. If it asks for perpendicular, well, same process. Find the slope of the line you want perpendicular to. Take the negative reciprocal to find the slope of your line. Use x and y from your point to find b, and rewrite the equation. You'll always need to be given information about a slope and a point in order for you to find the equation of a line. And that's it for our review. Uh, we'll do these questions at the bottom of the lesson um, as a part of our class. Um, and uh, that's it for our uh, lesson 2.0, reviewing slope and equations of a line. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.